Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a really fantastic Friday thus far. And so in this video, I'll be taking you guys through what is happening across the North Atlantic. So there is that disturbance that is given a higher chance of development and we'll be taking a look at the latest for it as well as uh, a general update for the Caribbean region. So before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, and so going to northeastern South America, we can see that there is this extensive area of cloud cover that is known to the cross sections of the southeastern Caribbean, including sections of the uh, Windward Islands, as well as uh, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, and that extends into uh, northern South America. With all this cloud cover, there might be some light showers at the most, but nothing much is really anticipated. We see some convective activity down in sections of Venezuela, though, but um, uh, there is that cluster of some activity just offshore so that is in association with a tropical wave that is making its way toward the west and now heading to the general caribbean region we can see that there's still lots of activity down in the southwestern caribbean all that uh developing convective activity is making its way into nicaragua enhancing the rainfall there are lots of showers lots of thunderstorm activity and uh i hope that everyone is doing okay because the rainfall there has been persistent for some time Time. And with persistent rainfall comes that enhanced risk of flooding. So I really hope that everyone there is doing okay. But we see that that activity is extended over into uh, parts of the eastern Pacific. But uh, going further up into sections of uh, northern Central America, going to El Salvador, going to parts of Honduras, the Bay Islands, Guatemala, the Yucatan, as well as Belize and Ambergris Key, we're not seeing that uh, much is in the area right now. And looking in the vicinity of the Greater Antilles, there we can see that things are mostly in the clear. Uh, some spots of thunderstorms noted across some areas, but nothing too intense right now. And uh, heading over into the east, over into the Virgin Islands and the rest of the Lesser Antilles, things are seeming to be in the clear. Maybe some brief passing clouds here and there but there isn't anything much happening as look into the coast of africa now we're drifting to the east and here we can see all of this activity which is in association with that disturbance that tropical wave now as this is going to be accelerating westward conditions are expected to be conducive enough to allow for it to develop and as soon as early next week this could become a tropical depression and that is the reason the chance of development is increasing so let's go on to what the National Hurricane Center as the show. So we're looking at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook and here we can see that this is now highlighted in orange which indicates the medium chance of development, a 40% chance of development and this is as of 2 a.m. So maybe by the 8 a.m. or even the 2 p.m. update later today uh, the chance could increase to maybe 50%. But imminent development is not expected because there we have that arrow pointing to that shaded area that is where we can start to see some action with this more development of those showers and thunderstorms and so guys there are factors that will be influencing uh, if this actually enters the Caribbean as well as how strong it could possibly be. So we see that based on this, it is expected to maintain a westward track, but as it heads closer to the Caribbean, it should start uh, to uh, go on a more northwesterly like track. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what the different models have to show here. And we're starting out with the GFS models. So we can see here that uh, if you're not familiar with this, those black lines are called isobars which join areas of equal pressure now when we see them in a circular manner with a pressure of at least 10 30 millibars or lower which is that number that you see uh, that is a low pressure system and we can sometimes be looking at tropical cyclones especially in the tropical atlantic and there we have the forecast time so gfs is expecting that as we're going to be heading into this weekend going to the early part of next week we'll see development of this but uh when we see more of those isobars in that circular manner that is indicating a stronger system the less we see a weaker system so as this is going to be making a closer approach to the region we see that it is expected to uh, weaken a lot maybe with minor impacts in the northeast so uh, very interesting here because the previous forecast call for the system entering the Caribbean and then making its way back out let's go on to the euro model right now so here we have it and uh, we can see that as we're going to be progressing 
progress in into again around the same time going into the early part of the new week uh development of this is anticipated by the euro model but take a look at this euro is expecting it uh to slow down and start to make that northwestward track let's go on to icon and so here we have the icon model and there we're seeing that development head into Monday, uh, also heading into Tuesday. Uh, not seeing that this is going to be a very strong system icon. Also expecting that it will start to make that northwestward track. And once it does, there we have the model showing some crazy intensification with this. Uh, a pressure seed of a hurricane uh, out there. And so why is this? So why are these models expecting that this is going to be moving to the northwest and not enter the Caribbean? Well, the track of this system is being influenced by the subtropical high that sits over the Atlantic. Now within high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere, winds rotate clockwise and they flow outward from the center. So that means that this system here is going to be propagating along the periphery and high pressures are blockades for these uh, systems, uh, these low pressure systems when they develop these storms or hurricanes. They can't just move through them, so they have to move around them. So based on the positioning of this, let's go back over the icon model. We can see here that it's maintaining that track going along the periphery of it, but once it is going to be getting that chance to curve around it, uh, it is going to be taking it and that is exactly what we see at the end of this model run uh, also similar story for the gfs and the euro models and so guys i also want to show you the ensemble tracks now this goes out to the 26th of june and we're looking at the euro ensemble tracks now each of these are different members now we see them being in close agreement about uh the system making its way toward the west for some time but we can see that these tracks get a lot more dispersed as we head closer to the caribbean now uh some of them are showing that hey this is going to be making its way into the caribbean crossing over the northern islands meanwhile others show that no it is going to be uh making that turn up to the north and so uh we see these different colors as well with the lines there we have that key right there now as we head to those different colors those are stronger winds going from that lighter to darker shade of blue that green yellow the orange as well as those pink shades so stronger system as we head further to those colors and we can see that the tracks that show that this is going to be making its way up to the north and actually missing the Caribbean uh, show that this could intensify a bit more becoming something stronger meanwhile the ones that take the system to the caribbean show a weaker storm so there are a lot of possibilities on the table at this point in time and as for the gfs ensemble members here we see that they are keeping this away from the caribbean for the most part and so there are a lot of possibilities on the table there can be a lot of changes there will be a lot of changes so seeing these models go a bit haywire sometimes isn't something uncommon with these systems because we're talking about something sometimes out from now and of course there's going to be a lot between now and then and next we want to go ahead and take a look at the saharan dust and so here we can see that there is quite a bit of dry air that is extensive across sections of the tropical atlantic and so once the disturbance is going to be uh continuing westward south of most of that dry air it is going to be in a pretty moist environment for the most part to help maintain that shower and thunderstorm activity and result in more intensification. However, uh, if it moves more into that dry air mass, then it is likely that we will start to see a lot of weakening and we see it a lot with disturbances at times. The chance even gets to as high as 70 or 80%, but then it starts to lose all of that concentrated activity because of the dry air and eventually that chance starts to decrease for development and eventually it becomes nothing so that is not completely off the table but i mean there is this consistency among the models that hey we could see development is pretty likely at this point in time but it really is a matter of how strong this will be and whether it will actually enter the caribbean and another factor that really helps to uh, result in a lot of weakening and eventually dissipation is the wind shear and so this is yet another uh, factor that will be influencing this but the main factor is really there to 
support development, which is those very warm temperatures, those very warm ocean waters. And so, guys, only time will really tell what is going to be happening. And if this does, in fact, manage to become a tropical storm, it will acquire the name Brett, which is the next name to be used for this hurricane season. And so that is pretty much it for this update. I'll continue to keep you guys posted on what is happening. So I hope that you found this to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be with wise.